Let there be love shared amongst us. Let there be love in our hearts. And may your love sweep the city. Cause us, O oh Lord, to arise. Give us a fresh understanding of brotherly love that is real. Let there be love shed amongst us. Let there be love. Let there be love shed amongst us. Let there be love in our hearts. And may this love sweep the city. Cause us, O oh Lord, to our eyes. Give us a fresh understanding of brotherly love that is real. Let there be love shed amongst us. Let there be love. Our prayer this morning, O oh Lord, is that you open our eyes to see that we owe each other some stuff. If we call ourselves Christians, we have some obligations towards one another. And as we talk about a few of these obligations this morning, may you open our eyes to behold wondrous things out of your word. And may we not just be hearers of your word, may we be practitioners, may we be doers, may we put your word into practice so that we will truly, genuinely have fellowship with each other and with you. Because that is our raison d'etre, to have relationship with you and with each other. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So I owe you part two. And everybody knows what I owe you is, right? It's a statement that is written. A lot of accountants like that statement. I owe you means I owe you. <laughs> and I'm looking at part two. My aim this morning is to continue to remind us that as a new community of believers, we both have non-negotiable rights and non-negotiable responsibilities towards each other. And powerful things happen when we do this right. There are some things that you should do for me because you are a Christian and I'm a Christian. And there are some things I should do for you because you are a Christian and I am a Christian. We want to remind ourselves of some of these things. And the Bible makes us understand that very powerful things happen when we do. When we did part one, I told you that you know, I pray that all of us will become totally debt-free. Not, not even a mortgage, right? Yet, no matter how much financial debt you have or do not have, there's one debt that will never go away. What is that debt? Love. Romans chapter 13 verse 8 says, Let no debt remain understanding. In other words, pay all your bills. Accept, accept the continuing debt to love one another. As you pay that debt, it even gets more. You never finish the debt to love one another. You never finish paying it off. You can't wash your hands and say, I'm done. A long time ago, I remember watching a, a t television drama. And there was this very proud young man. He had become very successful. He owned a chain of transportation companies. You know, they used to transport things across North America, you know, continents. And big, big chain, big businessman. Everybody respected him. He was on Forbes magazine, all this stuff. And he, was, he had no respect for his parents. He was not taking care of his parents. One day, his parents came to see him. Trying to make amends, trying to build that relationship. You know what this young man said? He said, you know what? You guys are disturbing me. Just tell me, how much do I owe you? Tell me all I owe you, I'll write you a check. The parents with very sad hearts left. And as if God himself was vindicating the parents, one by one, the guys' companies began to fold. He was paying. We live in a very monetary society. But it's not everything that can be bought by money. I owe you love. You owe me love. And that will never get off our balance sheet. We can never finish paying that debt. 
no matter how financially debt free and wealthy you become as a Christian, you will always carry an IOU. And we looked at how the Bible says, love one another. And we began to unpack love from 1 Corinthians 13. And the Bible says, love is patient. So I owe you patience and you owe me patience. You owe me long suffering. Love is kind. I owe you kindness and you owe me kindness. You can go to the website and pick that sermon and review it. I think it will be helpful so that you can get part two in context. So this morning as part two, what I want to do is, I want to pick a few one another scriptures. A few things the Bible says we should do for one another. We should do to one another. And that phrase, one another, if you look at the, the, the NIV, for example, the New International Version, one another appears about 40 times. About 40 times in the Bible, we are told one another. Do this for one another. Love one another. Be compassionate towards one another. Help one another. One another. About 40 different times. This one another phrase shows a reciprocal relationship. So it goes this way and it goes that way. It's called reciprocity. So I owe you some stuff. I have some responsibilities towards you. But you Max, you also owe me some stuff. You have some responsibilities, responsibilities towards me. So I'd like us to pick one of such scriptures. Can we turn our Bibles to Romans chapter 12? And read from verses 9 to 20. We'll read it together. Um, we all have Bibles in our pews from the, we read it from the English Standard Version. We're going to read it together. There are, don't forget, I said there are 40 different scriptures that talk about one another, but we just want to look at one. And then I'll, I'll, I'll jump, you know, here and there and give you some examples. I'm going to talk about IOU, seven IOUs, which all begin with an H. Some things I owe you, some things you owe me. Romans chapter 12, are you there? If you are there, say praise the Lord. If you are not there, say help me, Jesus. <laughs> Jennifer, how are you? Good, awesome. Are you there? All right, let's read from verse 9. Let's read it together. Romans 12, 9 to 21. Let's go. Let love be genuine. The Americans say genuine. <laughs> Let love be genuine. That's not English, that's American. No. <laughs> Let love be genuine. Let's go on. Abhor what is evil, hold fast to what is good. Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not be slothful in zeal. Be fervent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. Bless those who persecute you, verse 14. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Never be wise in your own sight. Repay no one evil for evil, but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. If possible... So far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. To the contrary, verse 20, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. For by so doing, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. From these scriptures, I want to pull out seven IOUs. They all begin with H so that you don't forget. Now, how many of you have heard of a city called Lagos, Nigeria? Lagos. Lagos is an amazing city. Very busy city. The traffic in Lagos, I'm telling you, you can stay in one place maybe for an hour. Amazing. There was one day I was stuck in traffic in Lagos. I almost missed my flight. I could see the airport, but I couldn't get there. <laughs> if I wasn't, wasn't carrying suitcases, I would have just run to the airport. I almost missed my flight. I was the last guy to enter the gate. Now, I talk about Lagos because Lagos has very many interesting things. One of the things that is said about Lagos is that you can find anything on the streets of Lagos. Anything. Even Rolex watches. <laughs> You're surprised. 
So somebody goes, a tourist goes to Lagos and somebody shows him a Rolex watch said, for sale, for sale, Rolex, Rolex, Rolex. And the guy looks at him and says, oh no, this cannot be a Rolex. This is an imitation. And the guy says, oh, sir, this is genuine imitation. <laughs> genuine imitation. The first thing we want to talk about that I owe you and that you owe me is honesty. 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 Genuineness. The first thing Romans 12, 9 says is, let love be genuine. Let love be genuine. And, and John writes the same thing as 1 John 13, and he says, sorry, 1 John 3, verse 18, he says, Dear friends, let us not love with words or tongue, but with actions and in truth. So I owe you genuineness. You owe me authenticity. We owe each other honesty. And as I was reading this, I was preparing this, God reminded me of a scripture in 1 John 1, 7 and 8. And I want to read to you from the New Century Version. It says, if we live in the light, 1 John 1, 7 and 8, as God is in the light, what is light? Light is transparency, right? Light makes everything plain. Nothing is hidden. He says, if we live in the light as God is in the light, we can share fellowship with each other. If we say we have no sin, we are fooling ourselves. He says that if we have genuine love, a genuine relationship, a transparent and honest relationship with each other, that is only when we can have fellowship. If there's no genuineness, there's no fellowship. It looks like fellowship, but it's not fellowship. And I like the way he says, do not fool yourselves. So you see, there's no true fellowship without honesty and genuineness. Otherwise, we are fooling one another. So this morning, I was telling my wife when I was coming, and she knows I like these, uh, you know, interesting phrases, but I coined something. I asked, asked, I asked, do we have fellowship or foolishship? Do we have fellowship or foolishship? Because the Bible says we are either having fellowship because we are honest with each other or we are fooling each other. So that is not fellowship. That's foolish. Which one do we have? The first thing the Bible mentions in Romans 12 verse 9, it says, let love be genuine. You owe me honesty and I owe you honesty. And I know that it's not always easy. But if we want true fellowship, then we have to pay the price of honesty. If we want true fellowship, you know, remember, there are three things we talked about in part one. I'll remind you that happen when there's true fellowship with one, each other. Three very powerful things that happen. If we want those things to happen, then we need to have honesty. Tell somebody, I owe you honesty. And just in case he's happy, tell him, but you owe me honesty. All right. So number one, I owe you honesty. You owe me honesty. Number two, I owe you honor. You owe me honor. Verse 12, sorry, verse 10 of Romans 12. So we just looked at verse 9. Verse 10 says, I'll do, don't forget, we're talking about one another scriptures. It says, I'll do one another in showing honor. I love that. What does honor mean? Honor means to pay you respect. You know, one very practical way of showing respect to each other is to respect each other's time. So when you tell me that we'll have a meeting at 3 o'clock and it's 3.30 and you haven't shown up, you are dishonoring me. That is disrespectful. And I know that it's not always we are able to be on time. So the respectful thing to do is to pick up the phone and call the person and say, because of A, B, C, D, I can't come, I am late, so please give me some time. Do you understand what I'm saying? But that is a show of respect. We show respect when we keep our promises to each other. And so yesterday, for example, I was supposed to be with the Isaiah Fellowship. They had an outing yesterday. But the rest of us didn't seem interested in the outing, but Isaiah was, so they went. And I really wanted to be part of the, of the fellowship. I really, really wanted to be there. But I just came from Turkey, London in New York last Friday, and then spent the rest of the week driving from Virginia through various meetings in Washington, D.C., right through New York, right through... Boston, all the way back to Connecticut. Saturday morning, I just felt I needed some rest. Because I came on Friday. 
And that's a surprise. I need some rest. Okay. And, um, and then, of course, I needed some time with the family as well. So I realized that looking at the time, I wouldn't be able to make it. So Johnson, is Johnson here? Johnson has sent me a text, you know, asking where are you, you know. So I, sent, I exchanged a couple of texts asking where they were, what time they wanted to close. But I realized at some point that I wouldn't be able to make it. So I, I picked my phone and I called him. And I apologized profusely. You see, if, if, if you had heard me talk with Johnson on the phone, you wouldn't believe that Johnson is a small boy. But I need to show him respect. And I told him, and I hope he did tell you, I said, tell the other people, tell everybody, profusely apologize on my behalf. Why did I do this? Because if we are going to have genuine fellowship with each other, we must honor each other. Is that okay? Genuine fellowship means I owe Johnson and I owe Isaiah Fellowship honor, just like they owe me honor. I like the way the version we read, read put it. It says, I'll do one another in honor. In other words, it's almost as if let's run over each other trying to honor each other. You know, you know I'll do, never stop paying the debt to, to, to honor each other. In fact, Philippians chapter 2 verse 3 says, consider others better than yourselves. You see, if you consider others better than yourselves, you can honor them. Why do you think, ah, you know, I'm that, you know, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm Dr. Preby, you know, ah, the MBCHB, BSC, QQQW, then you won't honor people. The Bible says, consider others better than yourselves. People, I want to plead with you. Let us honor one another. And one, honoring one another, one way of honoring one another is being courteous to one another. What does it mean to be courteous? First Peter 3, 8 says, finally be courteous. If you're wondering what it means to be courteous, is this, ask yourself. What I'm doing to this person, or what I'm not doing for this person, will I like it if they did the same to me? If you don't, then you know you are not being courteous. Because the Bible says, that's the golden rule in Matthew 7, 12, so in everything, do to others what you will have them do to you. How do you feel when you call people and call people, and they do not respond, and they do not return the calls? So this morning, I was going through my emails. I, was, I just thought about it. I said, oh boy, Caleb sent me an email on Tuesday asking whether we could meet this afternoon for some discussion with him and Leon. And I hadn't replied the mail. Did you, did you check your mail this morning? Did you see I had replied? I replied at dawn this morning. You know, you know why I'm sharing this with you? I want this to be practical. Because I realized that the Holy Spirit was convicting me. That isn't it just courteous? That somebody sent an email. And I knew I was going to be at the meeting, but he doesn't know that. He's not in my head. So the catcher's thing is just to reply the email and say, I'll be there. How difficult is that? We've got to honor. I owe Caleb honor. Just as he owes me honor. We owe each other honor if we're going to have genuine fellowship. Can somebody say amen? So two H's. Number one, I owe you what? Honesty. And you owe me honesty. Number two, I owe you honor. And you owe me honor. Number three, I owe you help and hospitality. And you owe me the same. Verse, 12, verse 14 says, Contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. You know what 1 John 3, 17 says? It says, If anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need, but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in this person? If there's any of us who comes to church with tattered clothing, and we don't even look at him twice, and yet every one of us, if we go into a closet, we'll find clothes that we haven't worn in two years. There's no genuine fellowship. How can I have my closet full of clothes I do not want or do not need? And we have a brother or sister who needs clothes and cannot get it. And we say, oh, we are one. We are fellows. We are Christians. I love you. Oh, I love you with the love of the Lord. Forget it. It's foolishness, not fellowship. This is serious. We are talking about genuine fellowship. And it bleeds my heart because I've seen congregations where people are struggling even to eat. And yet the pastor is buying a second BMW 5 Series. There's a problem. There's a problem. Contribute to the needs of the saints 
and seek to show hospitality, the Bible says, we owe each other help and hospitality. Galatians 6 2, carry each other's burdens. That is why we are praying for Jumping Lee. We are praying for her as if it's our sister because indeed she is our sister in the Lord. Carry each other's burdens. Carry each other's burdens. We owe each other help and hospitality. If you read from, from, uh, in Colossians, it actually says that teach and admonish one another. You owe me help. If there's something I don't understand in scripture, you can explain to me. Something I, you don't understand, I can explain to you. Tafu and I do some exchanges sometimes. You know, but we, I owe him that. And you ask me a question that I'm yet to respond to. You owe me that too. There may be something you understand that I don't understand. There be, we owe each other. The Bible says teach and admonish one another with all wisdom. Do you know you owe me hospitality? Jiwe, what is hospitality? Hospitality means receiving and treating people warmly and generously. I know, I know that we live in North America and every, it's each man for himself, right? I'm telling you, how many of you have even gone to your neighbor's house before? You know, we live in this secluded, but we, the question is, are we going to be Montrealers or we are going to be Christians? Are we going to be Canadian or we're going to be Christian? Are we going to be African or we're going to be Christian? Are we going to be Chinese or we're going to be Christian? The Bible says as Christians we owe each other hospitality. Let me ask you. How many of us have been to more than five people's homes in this congregation? You've been to more than five people's homes. Now raise your hand high. I want to count. Okay. What, what do you think the percentage is? About 40%? How many people's homes have you been to? Okay, that is one. Number two, how many of you have invited more than five different families in this church into your home? Sam is smiling. He's saying, I don't have a home. I'm talking about your parents' home. <laughs> Are you getting what I'm saying? Hospitality. And it doesn't matter what is North American. You see, that is why Jesus said that when we do these things, remember those three very powerful Jesus said will happen. He said when we do th these things, number one, people will know we are Christians. John 13, 35. He says by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. He says number two, when you do these things, people will believe the gospel. They will believe in Jesus too. He says so that the world may believe that you the Father have sent me. Number three, he said you will be blessed. You will be happy. You will be envied. Now that you know these things, you'll be blessed if you do them. Listen, if we decide to take fellowship, biblical fellowship seriously, we will see these results in our lives. No wonder we are not a powerful generation. No wonder we are a witnessless generation because we're not doing the things God says we should do it the way we should do it. We go banging the gospel into people's faces. When Jesus said, that's not the way to do it. You show love to each other and they themselves will say, can I join your church? But we don't do that. And then we pick Bibles and tracts and we go along. Have you believed in Jesus? Believe in Jesus or going to hell. Believe in Jesus. Will we do the right things? Will we do the things God has said them? I like the way manufacturers put a notice on their items. Like if you bought an iPad or you bought some, they'll put a notice there. That read all the instructions in this manual. Before operating, right? Because if you do not and something goes wrong, your warranty won't cover it. Don't tell me the gospel does not work until you have worked it the way the master said we should work it. Don't tell me love does not work until. Don't tell me there's no longer Christian fellowship that works until we have done it the way we should do it. If we want to see people in Montreal believe in the gospel, if we want people to know we are Christians, if we want people to look at us and say, wow, these are blessed people, then number one, Let's pay the debt we owe each other. I owe you honesty, you owe me honesty. Number two, I owe you honor, you owe me honor. Number three, I owe you help and hospitality, you owe me help and hospitality. You know why we are not hospitable? Because hospitality is inconvenient. You know that? It's an inconvenience. On Friday, we hosted a couple's fellowship in our home. The whole house was full. We had to clean everywhere. We have to, you know, it's easier to say, can we hold it in somebody else's house? Right? It's quote-unquote inconvenient. But that is why, that is what makes us Christians. We owe each other help and hospitality. Let me run through the others quickly. Number four, we owe each other harmony. 
verse 16 of Romans 12, it says, live in harmony with one another. True biblical fellowship is based on unity. Ephesians 4, 3, make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. Psalm 133 verse 1, how good and pleasant it is when brothers live together in unity. You owe me harmony, I owe you harmony. We owe each other unity. And sometimes it even means we agree to disagree. Right? This is what you agree, this, this is what you, 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 you think, this is what I think. I don't agree with you, but hey, let's be happy. Be Methodist or be Presbyterian, but we will not fight over that. The Bible says in verse 17 of the verse we read, If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. You owe me harmony. I owe you harmony. Let me round up. Number five, I owe you humility. And you owe me humility. Verse 16 says, Do not be haughty. That means proud. But associate with the lowly. Never be wise in your own sight. The Bible says in 1 Peter 5, To serve each other in humility. You owe me humility. I owe you humility. It will be a very sad day. Some, the day somebody says, I, As for me, I cannot talk to, I cannot talk to Yao. Hey, what, if, what if he shuts me up? Wow. That will be a very sad day. I will never forget a friend of mine who asked a pastor to do an introduction at his book launch. So the MC introduces the pastor and says, so we will go, we're going to invite, let's say, we're going to invite Yao to come and give us the opening prayer. The guy picks the mic and says, I am not Yao. I am Pastor Yao. Oh. Not just that. After he finishes praying, he picks the mic again and says, in fact, I am Reverend Yao. We owe each other humility. Last but one, we owe each other Big heartedness. Forget the B. Take the H. <laughs> we owe each other big hearted. What is big heartedness? The big word for it in English is magnanimity. You know, you know that word magnanimity? That, that, that means what does it mean? Yeah. Magnanimity. It means you, you have a big heart, right? You 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 you, you are patient, you forgive, you know. The Bible says, repay no, we just read, repay no one evil for evil. Forgive one another, the Bible says. Ephesians 4.32 Instead, be kind to each other, tender-hearted to each other, forgiving one another, just as God, through Christ, has forgiven you. Colossians 3.13 You must make allowance for each other's faults. Listen, you owe me. Cut me some slack, man. Cut me some slack. You owe me some magnanimity. I owe you some magnanimity. We owe each other big heartedness. By all means, we'll step on each other's toes sometimes. But we owe each other a big heart. I'll let that go. I'll forgive you. Last, we owe each other hush hush. Confidentiality. Hush hush. Listen, something happens here. Don't go and tell everyone in your school what happened and that girl and you know she was crying. Like, you know some things are just kept in the family and that is why Paul was so upset in 1 Corinthians 6 because the Christians in Corinth were taking each other to court and Paul said how? how come you're taking each other to the court and everybody out there, outside there is knowing what's going on in the church and I want to say ah look at those Christians ha, 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 ha. we owe each other confidentiality the Bible says in 1 Timothy 5.13, get into the habit of, don't get into the habit of being idle and going about from house to house, becoming an idler, gossip, busybody. These are things you not, saying things you ought not to say. You, we owe each, you know one of the ways Christians gossip a lot? Oh, shall we pray for sister so and so? You know, I heard that, and they'll start with shall we pray for so that it looks like she's sharing a prayer topic, but really she's gossiping. Right? Hey, have you heard what happened to Alice? We really need to pray for Alice. Oh, hmm. You see, we owe each other some confidentiality. As a new community of believers, we have both non-negotiable rights and conclusion and non-negotiable responsibilities towards each other. I owe you honesty, you owe me honesty. I owe you honor, you owe me honor. I owe you help and hospitality, so do you. I owe you harmony, you owe me harmony. I owe you humility. 
You owe me humility. I owe you big heartedness. You owe me big heartedness. I owe you hush hush. So do you. And Jesus said if we live this way, true fellowship, not foolishness, Fooling each other, but true fellowship. Number one, men will know we are Christians. Number two, people will believe in Jesus because of that. And number three, we will be called blessed. So we pray. Which of these things is most challenging to you? Is it honesty? Is it humility? Talk to God about it. And say, Lord, help me in this area. And help us as a church. To pay the debt we owe each other of honor and humility and harmony and help and hospitality, of honesty, of hush hush confidentiality, of big heartedness. Father, we thank you that you've given us instructions that will help us to truly live as a family of God. Forgive us for where we have failed and fallen short of this high standard. We repent of our lack of humility and honesty and authenticity and help, oh God, and hospitality. We repent of when we have gone gossiping instead of being harsh harsh. We repent, oh God, of any one of these seven that we have broken. Forgive us, wash us, heal us, restore us, and let us have true fellowship with one another and not fool ourselves. Let men believe in Montreal because of our fellowship. Let men come to know Jesus because they see our love for each other and our genuine community. And may we be a blessed people because we don't just know these things, we do them in Jesus' name. Amen.